Good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu News Analysis by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 9th May 2019. The list of articles which has been chosen for today's analysis along with the page numbers of Chennai, Delhi, Bengaluru and Tiruvannamalai editions are provided here. Link for the handwritten notes in the PDF format and the time stamping for the displayed news articles have been provided in the description box. For the benefit of smartphone users, the time stamping has also been provided in the comment section. Moving on to the first article discussion for the day, which is an editorial about proprietary seats. This article has appeared on page 9 in all the four editions. The information under this discussion will be relevant in the prelim syllabus under the area current events of national importance and in the main syllabus under GS paper 3 in major crops, cropping patterns in various parts of the country and marketing of agricultural produce and issues and related constraints. Stepping into the main discussion, the author starts the article with the controversy of PepsiCo company suing the farmers, which has triggered the discussion about the proprietary seeds. PepsiCo company was suing small farmers in India for growing a potato variety that is used in its lace chips. Immediately, the national and international communities sympathized with the farmers and due to this pressure, PepsiCo withdraw the lawsuit. The author states that the farmers are reliant on this proprietary seeds, either directly or indirectly. Now to further understand the article, let us first know what a proprietary seed is. In the seed industry, proprietary is often used to indicate germplasm or breeding methods that are solely used internally within a company for breeding or research. Often these breeding methods or germplasms are protected as trade secrets. The term proprietary is also used to indicate that a company or organization owns the seed or technology. Here the term germplasm mentioned means a living tissue from which a new plant can be grown. A germplasm can be a seed or another plant part such as a leaf, a piece of stem, pollen or even just few cells that can be turned into a whole plant. Germplasm contains the information for a species genetic makeup and it is a valuable natural resource of plant diversity. Now the seeds are grown using a high input environment that is with the usage of fertilizers, pesticides and irrigation methods and the proprietary seeds have a narrow uniform and non-variable genetic builds so there is no diversification possible here. There are many disadvantages of this proprietary seeds like it erodes or destroys local biodiversity because the farmers are changing the local conditions and farming traditions in order to make them to adapt to the usage of genetically standardized seeds. Here you can see the problem which is the farmers should be using genetically distinctive seeds that will be adapted to local conditions and farming traditions and not the vice versa. This unusual adaptation is ruining the local biodiversity. They are changing the natural setting because the proprietary seeds are high yielding in nature. And the socio-economic impact is that these seeds are expensive because the seeds are proprietary and hence farmers must pay royalties to use them. They need to purchase new seeds every season and the cost of the seeds is also rising every season. And additionally, the high input environment also incurs more cost and all these increase their debt. And further, they are also losing their skill because they are no longer using the indigenous varieties which they are used to and hence they are not saving and exchanging the seed of indigenous varieties also. Now beyond all these disadvantages, let us see why farmers are preferring the proprietary seeds and think they are better. One of the reasons is the green revolution where they were taught to buy high yielding variety of seeds. Here the yield may be high but it comes at a cost of losing the local biodiversity. And then the common science and industry knows best concept which has driven them to demand the government to pass a new seed law in India which permits the sale of certified seeds only. Another reason is small scale farming which is the production of crops and livestock on a small piece of land without using advanced and expensive technologies and this continues to stay on a downward spiral of low income, low status and lower dignity. As a contrary to the PepsiCo's allegation, India already has a protection of Plant Varieties and Farmers Rights Act of 2001. It is a plant variety protection law which regulates the intellectual property rights in seeds. This law provides a broad permission to the farmers 
we can say it provides for a farmer's privilege like the law permits farmers to save sow re-sow or multiply the seeds and it also permits the farmers to sell these seeds to other farmers irrespective of, of the original source of the seed next the author focuses on how to minimize the harm and maximize the gain for farmers for that the author suggests india to shift its agriculture from a high yield ideal to a high value one the values mentioned here include an agricultural model that strives to minimize environmental harm while maximizing nutritional gains and foremost importance to farmers welfare the author lists some measures that can be taken to achieve this shift firstly the small farmers must be educated to engage with in situ agriculture that conserves and improves traditional or they seeds and they should be encouraged to do it with proper incentive structures rather than with improved proprietary seed varieties secondly an immutable or fixed record keeping system should be introduced to break the link between the profitable and the proprietary this system would allow india and its rural communities to keep a proper track of where and how their seeds are being transferred and traded Moreover, the system would also ensure smart contract facilitated micropayments to the farmers from the monetary returns coming from users and buyers of these seeds around the globe. These monetary returns would effectively incentivize continuous cultivation and improvements of indigenous seeds on one hand and ensure sustainable growth of agriculture and of rural communities on the other. Thirdly, as a key prerequisite to the execution of the first two plans the author mentions that india's invaluable traditional ecological knowledge systems must be revived and it should be made a part of mainstream agricultural research and education the author points to the ancient indian literatures like vriksha ayurveda and krishi parashar which lists indigenous and traditional technologies for agriculture vriksha ayurveda is the ancient indian science of plant life and krishi parashar talks about the general agriculture and the revival of these technologies is central to promoting sustainable high value agriculture with this we come to the end of this discussion the displayed mains question will be discussed in the last session moving on to the next article for the day which is about the patta chitra paintings this news article has appeared on page 7 of delhi edition only the contents and the analysis of this news article will be relevant in the prelims preparation under current events of national importance and in mains preparation in general studies paper 1 under indian culture salient aspects of art forms from ancient to modern times this news article discusses about the damage caused to the heritage village of ragurajpur by cyclone fani this village is located in puri district of odisha and the heritage village is famous for its traditional works such as pattachitra paper marks and wooden carvings to dolls etc in this context let us know about the art form of pattachitra which has utmost in importance in the preliminary examination pattachitra paintings are the oldest and the most popular fo art form of odisha pattachitra is a sanskrit word where patta means canvas and chitra means picture the painters who paint these pic pattachitra are called as chitrakars locally pattachitra is a painting done on canvas the paintings are created by rich colorful application creative motifs and designs and it portrays simple themes which are mostly mythological depictions in the traditional method making the patta is the first thing the painters start preparing a tamarind paste which is made by soaking tamarind seeds in water for 3 days the seeds are later pounded with a crusher mixed with water and then heated in an earthen pot to turn it into a paste the paste is then used to hold two pieces of cloth together with it and for a couple of times it is coated with a powder of soft clay stone until it becomes firm as the cloth becomes dry a final touch of polishing is given first with a rough stone and then a smooth stone or wood until the surface becomes smooth and leathery after this the canvas is ready to be painted on the colors that are used in the paintings are sourced from naturally available raw materials as we saw earlier very simple mythological themes are used in this paintings some of the popular themes represented through this art forms are tiya badiya which is the depiction of the temple of jagannath next is krishna leela which is the enactment of jagannath as lord krishna displaying his powers as a child and next is dasavatara patti which means the depiction of 10 incarnations of lord vishnu and then 
Panchamukhi, which is the depiction of Lord Ganesh as a five-headed deity. These Patachitra paintings have been awarded geographical indication tag, that is GI tag under handicrafts category in the year 2008 to 2009. The Patachitra logo has also been awarded GI tag in the year 2013 to 14 under handicrafts category. Now try to know some of the other popular paintings of India. Majority of these paintings have been awarded GI tags as well. The years of awarding GI tags for some of these paintings are also mentioned here for your reference. Some of the other popular traditional paintings of India are Madhubani paintings of Bihar, Varli folk paintings of Maharashtra, miniature paintings of Rajasthan and Tanjo paintings from Tamil Nadu. Madhubani paintings are practiced in the Mithila region of Bihar. Varli folk paintings is practiced by the Varli tribal people of Maharashtra and Gujarat. Next, the miniature paintings are practiced in many areas of Rajasthan state, which was patronized by the Rajput rulers. Finally, we have Tanjur paintings, which is practiced in the Tanjavur district of Tamil Nadu. With this, we come to the end of this discussion. The displayed are the previously asked questions in the preliminary examination relating to the paintings of India. It has been provided for the benefit of the viewers. Have a look at it. Here displayed practice prelims questions will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the next article which is about trans fat. This news article has appeared in page 18 of Delhi edition only. The contents of this news and our analysis will be relevant in prelims preparation under current events of national and international importance and under general science also. And in mains preparation in general studies paper 3 under food processing and related industries in India, their scope and significance. Stepping into the main discussion, World Health Organization is partnering with International Food and Beverage Alliance, in short IFBA, to achieve the goal of eliminating industrially produced trans fat by 2023. For this very purpose, the World Health Organization has released Replace Action Package in May 2018. The Replace Package serves as a roadmap for countries to implement actions to reduce and eliminate industrially produced trans fats. In this context, let us know in brief about trans fats. Any food which we consume includes micronutrients like carbohydrates, fats and proteins. Different kinds of fats are present in our food such as saturated fats, unsaturated fats and trans fats. And there are two major unsaturated fats namely monounsaturated fatty acid and polyunsaturated fatty acid. Now out of these fats, trans fat is the most unhealthy to human health. Let us know the sources of this unhealthy trans fat. Trans fat is naturally present in beef, lamb and in full fat dairy products. And trans fats are formed during the reuse of cooking oil also. They are also formed when the oil is heated above 180 degrees Celsius. And trans fats are largely produced artificially in industries. They are produced by partial hydrogenation of the vegetable oils. Hydrogenation means addition of hydrogen to oils. This leads to the formation of trans fats. Some of the advantages of partial hydrogenated oils are that they are quite inexpensive compared to the existing fats available. Also, they have a long shelf life. And these oils improve the stability of the flavors, taste and texture of the food to which it is added. The main disadvantage is that the intake of the food containing these trans fats increase the bad cholesterol in the body. The low density lipoprotein levels or LDLs in the body shoots up leading to cholesterol accumulation in the blood vessels. This will lead to blood clots and in turn it will affect the blood flow. And finally this leads to coronary heart disease. The intake of food containing trans fats also leads to obesity and high blood pressure in humans. Since trans fats are more in oils, it is commonly found in foods that require more fats or oils for preparation. So trans fats are found in chips, cakes, biscuit, frozen pizza, margarine and in vanaspati or dalda and in many such foods. Now you also need to know about the trans fat scenario from Indian perspective. In India, FSSAI that is the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India has mandated that the trans fat should not exceed more than 5% by weight in vegetable fats. Also, FSSAI has recently proposed to limit its usage to less than 2%. In line with WHO's campaign, FSSAI has also launched Heart Attack Rewind campaign in December 2018. FSSAI aims 
to create awareness about trans fat and eliminate them in India by 2022, which is one year ahead of WHO's target. Now let us get back to the news article. We saw that WHO has partnered with International Food and Beverage Alliance. Let us now know in brief about this alliance. This International Food and Beverage Alliance was founded in the year 2008 by the CEOs of the world's leading food and non-alcoholic beverage companies. They include companies like Coca-Cola, Nestle, PepsiCo, Unilever, Mondelez, Mars, Kellogg's, McDonald's, etc. All these companies produce world's most chunk of processed food and non-alcoholic beverage. Globally, this alliance has pledged that the amount of industrial trans fat will not exceed 2 gram for every 100 gram of fat or oil produced and this will be done by 2023. This alliance has also pledged that the salt, sugar and the saturated fats used in their food products will be reduced gradually. WHO's partnership with this alliance is of great significance since it would help to meet WHO's targets by the 2023 deadline. With this, we come to the end of this discussion and the practice problems question will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the next news article for the day which is about the discussions that happened between 15th Finance Commission and Reserve Bank of India. This news article appears on page 13 in all the four editions. We will be covering three aspects in this news article which includes budgeting, PM Kisan scheme and also about Finance Commission. So, the contents and the analysis of this news article will be relevant in your prelims preparation under current events of national importance, next under Indian polity and governance, economic development including social sector initiatives. It will be also relevant in mains preparation under general studies paper 2 in the areas appointment to various constitutional posts, powers, functions and responsibilities of various constitutional bodies. Next, under government policies and interventions for development in various sectors and issues arising out of their design and implementation. And also in general studies paper 3, under government budgeting and finally under issues related to direct and indirect farm subsidies and minimum support prices. Stepping into the main discussion, RBA has presented the Indian government's finances for the financial year 2019-20 to to the Finance Commission. The RBA has predicted a possible fiscal slippage in the revised estimate of the financial year 2018-19. to It means that the fiscal deficit is likely to increase. Let us know what is meant by budget estimate, revised estimate and fiscal deficit in brief to understand the article. Budget estimate refers to the likely expenditures and revenues of the government. Say for example, in the February month this year, that is 2019, the finance minister announces the budget. He gives the budget estimate for the financial year 2019-20, to which means the upcoming financial year, because February 2019 will be a part of the financial year 2018-19 to and not 2019-20. to Now, in the budget announcement, the revised estimates are also presented. The revised estimates are nothing but the budget estimates that undergo revision. Here, in this case, the revised estimates are for the financial year 2018-19. to If you see in this picture, the budget estimates and the revised estimates of the corresponding financial years are given, which will give you an idea. Next, the fiscal deficit means the total expenditure minus the total receipts, except the borrowings and other liabilities of the government. It simply means the deficit that arises when the government's expenditure exceeds its revenue. Here, the money generated as revenues from the borrowings is excluded. Let us come back to the news article now. In the meeting with the Finance Commission, RBA has presented that the fiscal deficit budgetary estimates for the financial year 2019-20 to were budgeted to be lower. But the fiscal deficit is much higher for the revised estimate of the financial year 2018-19. to Generally, Based on the revised estimates of the current year only, the budget estimates for the upcoming budget are planned for all the budget heads. But here, the fiscal deficit in the revised estimate is high, but it is predicted as low in the budget estimate. RBA notes this deviation as poor fiscal marksmanship. RBA has also given some reasons for the possible fiscal slippage. First one is PM Kisan scheme, which was announced in the interim budget. It is likely to cost 75,000 crore this financial year. Secondly, the revival package 
for power distribution companies under the Uday scheme. And then farm loan waivers have also been mentioned as reasons that would lead to fiscal slippage. It means that the fiscal deficit is going to increase. Some of the other issues that were discussed during the meeting include public sector borrowing requirements and continuity of the finance commission and development of expenditure codes since the expenditure norms vary from state to state. On the continuity of the finance commission, the government statement said that this was required more in view of the fiscal management requirements of the states, especially given the absence of midterm reviews of awards granted by the finance commission as it used to happen earlier with the awards granted by the planning commission. Now let us know about PM Kisan scheme and finance commission in brief from prelims perspective. First let us see PM Kisan scheme. PM Kisan is the acronym for Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi. It is an income support scheme where the government will give 6000 rupees every year to the farmers families in three installments of 2000 rupees each. The beneficiaries are the vulnerable land holding small and marginal farmers who possesses a cultivable land of up to 2 hectares. It is a direct benefit transfer scheme, meaning the money is directly transferred to the farmers bank accounts. Note that here the tenant farmers are not the beneficiaries of the PM Kisan scheme. Tenant farmers are those who rent an agricultural land and carry out farming activity. Some of the ineligible Beneficiaries of PM Kisan scheme are number one, the institutional landlords or landholders, and next, all those farmer families when at least one member is or was a holder of constitutional posts or government employees. If the income tax of the previous year is paid, then they are not eligible to get monetary benefits under this scheme. Also, if a member of the family is a professional like chartered accountant or doctor, etc., then they are also not eligible. Next let us see about Finance Commission. Finance Commission is a constitutional body. At present, the 15th Finance Commission is in place. Article 280 of Indian Constitution tells that the President of India has to constitute a Finance Commission once in every five years or even earlier than that if he feels necessary. This Finance Commission shall consist of a Chairman and four other members who shall also be appointed by the President. Article 280 has also mentioned that the qualifications for appointment of the members of the Finance Commission shall be decided by the Parliament. Thus, the Finance Commission Act of 1951 has been enacted by the Parliament for the same. The main duty of the Finance Commission is to make recommendations to the President regarding the distribution of tax proceeds between the Union and the States and also allocation of the shares of tax proceeds between the States. Next, the Finance Commission can also recommend principles which would govern the grants in aid to the states that is being given from the Consolidated Fund of India. Also, the Finance Commission can give its recommendation on any other matter referred to the Commission by the President in the interests of sound finance. With this, we come to the end of this analysis. The display prelims question will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the next article for the day, which is about the newest pit viper species. This article has appeared in page 18 of Delhi edition only. The information under this article is relevant under current events of national importance. Stepping into the main discussion, a team of herpetologists has found a new species of pit viper. It is India's fifth brown pit viper, but with a reddish shade. It was found in a forest in West Kaming district of Arunachal Pradesh. This new species has been named Arunachal Pit Viper or Trimerisurus Arunachalensis. It makes Arunachal Pradesh the only Indian state to have a pit viper named after it. Only one male reddish brown pit viper has been found. It was found to be venomous snake with a unique heat sensing system. More sightings of this species would gradually help the study about its habits, diet and breeding and about whether it lays eggs or bears young ones. A comparative analysis of DNA sequences of this new species and examination of its morphological features that is the form and structure of the snake suggested that the snake belonged to a species which was not yet described before. And the single known specimen of the species makes it currently the rarest pit viper in the world and it was donated to the museum of the State Forest Research Institute in Itanagar.
Before the discovery of this new pit viper, India had four brown pit vipers, namely Malabar pit viper, horseshoe pit viper, hump nosed pit viper and Himalayan pit viper and these were discovered 70 years ago. All these are protected by the Schedule 4 of Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 and all these are listed as least concern by the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources that is the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species. In February 2019, another snake which was named Crying Keelback was discovered in Arunachal Pradesh in the Leparada district and it was found to be a non-venomous snake. Note that it has been wrongly mentioned as 2018 in the newspaper. With this we come to the end of this discussion. The displayed prelims question will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the last article for the day which is about the bilateral relations between India and the United States of America. This article has appeared on page 9 in all the four editions. The article is relevant in prelims preparation under the areas current events of national importance and in main syllabus in GS paper 2 under the area bilateral agreements involving India and affecting India's interests and also in effects of policies and politics of developed nations on India's interests. Before entering into the article let us see few facts relating to India and United States relationship. The joint statement issued by India and the United States in June 2016 states India and US as enduring global partners in the 21st century. The Ministry of External Affairs calls India-US relationship as global strategic partnership. USA has designated India as a major trading partner in June 2016, which makes the US to facilitate the technology sharing to the level that it shares with its closest allies and partners. This measure will also facilitate industry collaboration for defense co-production and co-development. Another fact is about the Indian diaspora in the United States. Around 1% of the total population in US are Indian Americans, which is approximately 35 lakh of the population and they constitute an important ethnic group in US. The Indian Americans include a large number of professionals, business entrepreneurs and educationalists with increasing influence in the society. Coming to this editorial article, the crux of the article is that in the present scenario, a true strategic partnership between India and USA is difficult to achieve. And this is due to various deleterious or damaging developments and non-solving of these damaging developments. The author highlights the recent finalized decision of United States about not to extend the Iran sanctions waiver to India and the another decision announced by US on March 4th about the termination of generalized system of preferences or the GSP designation and its associated benefits to India. The termination may take effect at least after a minimum notice period of 60 days. However, no decision about the withdrawal of benefits is finalized yet, even though the minimum notice period is completed in the first week of May. With respect to e-commerce rules, the new e-commerce investment rules specify that it is the responsibility of an e-commerce platform to ensure that none of its vendors sell more than 25% of their products in the e-commerce platform. If a vendor is found selling more than 25% of product in an e-commerce platform, say in Amazon, then Amazon becomes ineligible for FDI. There were various other measures of the new e-commerce policy that frustrated American industries particularly Walmart and Flipkart. The concerns of US industries with intellectual property regime is with respect to drug price control and the intellectual property regime in India. The complaint that the Indian patent policy allows compulsory licensing, which means when the drugs made by patent holders are too costly or highly expensive and are out of reach of people who need them, then the government can allow someone else to produce the patented product or patented process without the consent of the patent owner. Note that compulsory licensing is a flexibility given to developing countries under the World Trade Organization's Agreement on Intellectual Property or the Trade Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights Agreement which is shortly called as TRIPS Agreement. US companies, particularly pharmaceutical and medical devices industries say that this compulsory licensing does not allow or does not facilitate commercialization for their firms in India. Regarding data localization, the US wants India to allow 
all payment data on domestic transactions to be stored outside India, which is carried out in India with Indian citizens. Here, India's stance is that all payment data on domestic transactions in India to be stored inside the country only, that is within India. The author says that the economic and trade tensions between India and US are not new. And now, in the present administration of the US government, these tensions and the complaints from the US companies have intensified. The author suggests few measures to make proclaimed strategic partnership between two countries into reality. The first suggestion is the multiple long-standing issues on trade and economy between the countries has to be resolved. The author calls these issues as non-security nuisances. Right now, the non-security dimension between the countries has been lagging behind the fast-growing security dimension. To be called a true strategic partnership, both security and non-security aspects of the relationship has to move hand in hand in terms of value, volume and timing. A shift from a strong security relationship to a bona fide strategic partnership is required and to execute this shift, the prerequisite is to solve existing non-security issues. India and USA should simulate the similarity of economic aspects of relationship like between US with UK, Australia and Israel and a broad based strategic partnership with trust and cooperation across a wide spectrum of issues is necessary. However, the author concludes due to the array of issues, a true strategic partnership is difficult to achieve between India and US at least for now. With this, we come to the end of the analysis session. The displayed mains question will be discussed in the next session. Moving on to the last session for the day which is practice questions discussion session. The first question is with reference to Patachitra, consider the following statements. First statement, it is the oldest and the popular painting art form of Odisha. Second statement, some of the popular themes used in these paintings are Krishna Leela and Panchmukhi. Third statement, these paintings are usually painted on mud walls in the villages of Odisha. Which of the above statements is or are correct? Keep in mind, we have to look for the correct statement. Let us use the elimination technique for this question. Here if you see from all the options, the first statement is correct. Next, Patachitra means painting on a canvas, where Patta means canvas. But in statement 3, it is said that they are painted on the mud walls. So the third statement is wrong. If you eliminate the third statement, options C and D are out of contention. And from our analysis session, we know that Patachitra themes are based on mythological depictions like Krishna Leela, Panchamukhi, Toshapatara Patti and Tiyabadiya, to name few. So the second statement is correct. The question has asked for the correct answer. So the correct answer for this question is option B, 1 and 2 only. The next question is, consider the following pairs. Here, the first pair is paintings and the second pair is states. Select the incorrect pair from the options given below. Here the first pair is wrong as we have already discussed today Madhubani painting is practiced in the state of Bihar not Assam and from our analysis session we also know that Patachitra is practiced in the state of Odisha. So second is correct and the third pair is also wrong because Varli is practiced in the state of Maharashtra and Gujarat not West Bengal. So the correct answer to this question should be the incorrect pairs. So here the incorrect pair is 1 and 3. So the correct answer is option A only. Next question is consider the following statements with respect to trans fats often seen in news. First statement, World Health Organization has developed replace action plan with an aim to eliminate the industrially produced trans fat from the global food supply by 2023. Second statement, trans fats are artificially produced in industries using the method of partial hydrogenation of oils. Which of the above statements is or are correct? Keep in mind, we have to look for the correct statement. Here the first statement is correct. World Health Organization has developed the Replace Action Package. The main aim is to eliminate the industrially produced trans fat from the global food supply by the year 2023. Next, the second statement is also correct as trans fats are artificially produced in food industries using the methods of partial hydrogenation of oils. The question is asked for the correct answer. So the correct answer for this question is option C both 1 and 2. Next question is consider the following statements regarding PM Kisan scheme. 
first statement is it is an income support scheme for the vulnerable land holding farmer families having cultivable land up to 2 hectares. Second statement a direct income support of rupees 6000 per year is transferred directly into the bank accounts of the beneficiary farmers in four installments of 1500 each. Which of the above statements is or are correct? Here the first statement is correct. This is an income support scheme for the land holding farmers of less than 2 hectares. The second statement is partially wrong. The total amount is correct here which is 6000 rupees but the amount is paid in 3 installments of 2000 rupees each and not in 4 installments. Since the question has asked for the correct answer, the correct answer for this question is option A one only. Next question is consider the following statements regarding finance commission. First statement it is a constitutional body constituted as per article 280 of Indian constitution. Second statement. One of the duties of the Finance Commission is to make recommendations to the President regarding the distribution of tax proceeds between the Union and the States. Which of the above statements is or are correct? Here the first statement is correct as Finance Commission is constituted as per Article 280 of the Indian Constitution. The second statement is also correct because one of the duties of Finance Commission is to make recommendations to the President regarding the distribution of tax proceeds between the union and the states and also allocation of the shares of tax proceeds between the states. The question has asked for the correct statements. So the correct answer for this question is option C both 1 and 2. Next question is which among the following is the only state in India to have a pit viper named after it? Option A Assam, Option B Nagaland, Option C Mizoram, Option D Arunachal Pradesh. This is a direct question. We saw in our analysis that Arunachal Pradesh is the only state in India to have a pit viper named after it and the name of the pit viper is Arunachal pit viper or Trimerosaurus arunachalensis. So the correct option for this question is option D Arunachal Pradesh. Let us see one mains question based on GS paper 3. How do proprietary seeds affect the crop diversity and economy of farmers? Suggest measures to shift Indian agriculture from a high yield ideal to high value ideal. For the first part of the question define what is proprietary seeds and its disadvantages as we have discussed in the analysis like it erodes local biodiversity, uh, high expenses etc. Then for the second part mention the points like educating the small farmers, encouraging them with incentives, fixed record keeping and reviving traditional and ecological knowledge of India etc. And do not forget to explain these points in brief. Let us see one main question based on GS paper 2 which is the economic ties between India and USA are not commensurable to the levels of a true strategic partnership. What are the reasons that hinder the realization of the stated partnership and suggest few measures to improve the situation. For the first part you may write the potential trade between India and US which is around 500 billion US dollars but right now only 140 billion US dollars business is happening and also state the nature of a true strategic relationship provide the various deleterious developments that hinder the realization of the proclaimed relationship by both countries and also suggest the measures as discussed by the author in the editorial article today such as re resolving the long standing issues in trade taking the security and non security relationships hand in hand and your own suggestions in the answer. Do not forget to like comment and share and do subscribe to our Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel for more updates on civil service examination preparation.